my goodness. I have been playing around, trying to figure out how to solve this puzzle forever. Because I, I did, I got, I got it to here. There's two different ways you can get the beam here, right? But then, I know I eventually need to get this ball. And I know that the only way I can get that ball is if these, this thing on the bottom here and this thing on the top are being charged by a beam of light. Which brings this red thing all the way all the way up to green and then this creature will drop the ball. Like, I know that. But for some reason, I can't get the beam over into this room. I had previously said that maybe that's what you're supposed to do and that'd be really interesting if one puzzle, if one room, one room's puzzle spilled over into another room. But now I'm starting to think that's impossible. And as soon as that thought of it impossible creeped into my mind, I decided to go advent I started to go adventuring. Because previously, only well, I can't, I'm not 100 percent positive about this, but only this door was open. And so this is the door, the door that I chose to explore, which led me to that room I was just in. Right? But upon exploration, I realized and I saw that this, not that door, but this door is now open. Now, was it has it always been open or not? I don't know. But due to my desire to explore, instead of just getting stuck on one puzzle, almost to the point where I wanted to quit the goddamn game and never play it again, I explored, which led me here, into now a new path. And I knew I had never been here before because this little mechanic, this little thing here where it kind of, it, see, it, it exposes the inside of this tube. This only happened at one point during the entire game and it wasn't this point. So I knew this was new to me. And it led me to this place where I now see, uh, oh, well there was a creature up here sweeping. There was a creature up here sweeping on this computer room. Man. The look where I am is so confusing right now. Where I'm just I'm wondering if this ending is just gonna be like I am a cell and my job was just to come in here and fix some problem. I'm just a cell of some somebody's somebody's body. I'm a virus of, and someone just like, hey, I need you to help us fix a problem within my body. I wonder if that's gonna be the end of this game. Like that's a climactic point where you realize you're just helping some big creature function properly, just like a virus or a cell sometimes helps one of us human beings function properly. Or improve or whatever not what not look at this look what happens look at the look at the look at the sui hen the sui hen jo, the uh, the sui, sui hen the surface of the water when i dip this pole into it look at that now look at it as i pull it up <laughs> you see that? It was like that little that little blue blob part was just a set, a, a distinct and separate animation. But it was slightly different animation for the pole. But it wasn't completely. It didn't completely conform to the pole because. You know, the pole, it was still that way, even after the pole was removed from the water completely. Okay, so that's... <gasps> oh. I just really solved the puzzle. You just dump stuff in there, dumping stuff in there causes the water to come up further. Okay. That's an interesting, that's very interesting. Me just being curiously showing you that weird animation sequence they have for each, unique animation sequence they have for each, um, what do you want to call it, each, uh, object, help me solve the puzzle. That's really interesting. Let me get inside. Come on. Yeah, that's this is a real. That's a really interesting puzzle. See, that environment manipulation. That's just awesome as hell. That is just so fun. I have never 
viewed or experienced the environment like I have here. I've never experienced a game that uses the environment like I have here. Like back in the day, remember when there was like this game called uh, Kill? No. Red Factor, and it was like one of the very first games ever, FPS games ever, where you can just like blow holes up in the wall and shoot people and stuff like that. Like that was off the hook, right? Well, this is like that, but then actually enjoyable. Not just, well, that was fun, but this is just fascinating. Like, there's not a single moment when. There was not a single moment when it was explicitly showed you that water is a mechanic that is used in this game. Through my explorations, I showed you that, you know, you dip into water and, you know, you come back out and you don't die, and that's awesome. But this is. Like, you just had to come to this realization on your own. You're like, hey, there's water here. So far, it does nothing. Oh, wait a second. I'm using it now to solve a puzzle. They're tapping into a different cognitive section or a different part of the brain. Like, there's not just... It's not just... Because usually, like, okay, for example, in a, in a deductive puzzle, the way you solve that puzzle is by... The rules are told to you explicitly, like in the game Puzzle Agent, and then you just have to solve the problem. For example, in a typical deductive puzzle um, would be, here are the rules. Pawn moves up one place. Uh, king can move one space in any direction. Queen can move any direction. These are the rules, okay? Here's the objective. Go. Solve the objective. That's a deductive puzzle. Inductive puzzle, on the other hand, tells you absolutely nothing. This was an inductive puzzle. I was not explicitly told anything about this water. I was not explicitly told anything about carrying the objects. Actually, I wasn't. The very beginning of the game. Okay, so they did guide me some way. But I was not explicitly told the relationship between water and objects. Was not. I was not told that. Through experience, through playing with the environment, through just... Um, for my own personal observations and experiences, I, I, I came to the conclusion of what the, what the solution, what the outcome of the puzzle should be. That's an inductive puzzle. This is one of the first games I've ever played. No, no. This is one of the first games. This is the first game where I realized the existence of deductive puzzles. I've toyed with the idea in other, in other things, but this is the first time where, I, where it finally made a connection. Like, I discovered that there are deductive and in, inductive puzzles playing this game called Broken Mirror. And this is the first game where I finally found a real, real world example of one, and it's it's very gratifying. Okay, now this right here, I'm I am familiar with this. I've seen this beam mechanic before, and I know I'm supposed to get it here, right here. Now this is interesting. This is a repeat puzzle format, puzzle design. So. I'm starting to see that the developers of this game have, while they're developing this game, they, they, they discovered a puzzle format that was really fun to design around, and they're kind of sticking towards it, even though that, that what I just showed you where you just had to dump the stuff into the pool, that was completely apart and distinct from this. Since, I've seen, since I'm seeing a repeat, I'm starting to realize what the the base object like if you were to describe this game on the back on, on the on the back of a a cereal box you would include this type of puzzle in it you'd say yeah it's a game about a ro robot flying around he can pick pick up stuff and you 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 guide lasers to these little crystals because the reason I'd say that is because you'd have to somehow like pitch this game to somebody, right? You're in an elevator, whatever. You have to at some point have to pitch this game to somebody. You could, you wouldn't say, "Oh, this is a game about a robot that flies around, grabs things, and he dumps it into water, and then that water, you know, it, it's not that." The mechanic, the, the the overall theme is not that. The theme is the puzzle theme is so far what it'd be is these lasers guiding them to this thing right here. And uh, I'm, it's cool that I that, that I realized this on my own. I think that's a really cool um, thing. Holy shit, Nugget! Look at this. Look where I end up when I'm following this thing. It's the same goddamn spot I was before. Oh, ho, ho, ho. 
That is awesome! So it's like two puzzles. Two separate puzzles, two separate light puzzles that have been combined into one. I take back the whole pitch, if I were to pitch this game to someone in an elevator, I'd say it's, it's a story about a robot flying around, picks up stuff, and manipulates his lasers. This is just one really fucking big elaborate puzzle. And very well, these designers are not like pigeonholed by this puzzle format. When I'm done with this puzzle, since it's just one elaborate, big ass elaborate puzzle, when I finally solve it, get this ball thing, bring it up to this little dealio right here, Put it into his little hand right here. I'm done with this puzzle, and they could—they have—they have all the freedom they want to go and explore a completely different type of puzzle, using the using this one mechanic I have of dropping, picking, and drop, picking up and dropping stuff, flying around, and then just using the environment to create a brand new type of puzzle. This is just mind-bogglingly awesome shite right here. Achieving this situation this work of art achieving this work of art was as simple as realizing that I want this straight line instead of this instead of this kind of straight line that's it it was all because I th I didn't realize that the level of the line had to be like that and so I spent a year I think it was about two years I think I spent trying to figure out how to balance this ball that you see there on top of this ball. So I was like spending about two years trying to balance these balls on top of each other. Trying to figure out which way to do it. <laughs> but um, I think the reason I'm pointing this out is because I think this is something that happens to lots of gamers. They get stuck in their goddamn head. I'm positive about it. I think we get stuck in our head. We think a solution to something some is some is one way. And we just try to play around with that possibility forever. Forever. Just doing any possible thing. It's like it's like in the olden days of Doom when you know the secret doors are they look just like any of the doors you spend the entire next 10 15 hour just clicking on every single section of the wall to find that one secret door so you can get like 100% in the secret areas. It's like we just get stuck in something and we just we 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 play around with it forever. I think a good practice to have to stop this such is cuz it's a time waster is to play around with an idea for maybe five ten minutes and when it's not working stop regardless of how accurate and how correct you think you are and assess your environment if it's an environment driven game like this if it's a puzzle adventure um, game where you where, where environment plays a huge role in the success successful completion of puzzles obviously it's 100% logic driven where you're using very very little cues from environment more just numbers and using your brain to solve stuff then I don't know don't have enough don't have enough experience with that to start to act like I know anything but yeah that sounds like a good uh, tip 